One of my standouts was the saxophone summit uh, in uh, December 99 with uh, Joe Lovano and Dave Liebman. In days of old, when saxophonists came together, it was frequently what were called tenor saxophone battles. But uh, tonight's collaboration really isn't a battle, it's truly a summit meeting that each has an individual approach and you seem to really inspire each other to greater creative heights. Yeah, it's, it is interesting. It's not a battle at all. Uh, we're not, um, it's, it's not about that. We're trying to get together and make music. And that really, we, you know, that's just happened naturally because we're, you know, basically coming from a pretty creative place with this. And it's been extremely different every night. You know, we're, uh, we're just kind of calling tunes and, uh, and try to make it, a, as we say, a relaxed hit. You know, not have it structured and just be able to enjoy each other and not have any kind of, um, you know, not have to worry about music. Uh, reading music on stage and learning parts. We just wanted to really get together and improvise and have fun. I think we've succeeded. Let me first address that saxophone summit issue because that's really important in the narrative arc of Mike's career because when he first came to town, he came to town in 1969. He, he split from Indiana University after three semesters, came to town, was living on the Upper West Side, played on Randy's first record as a leader, Score, uh, which uh, came out on the uh, Solid State label, the same label that the year before had put out uh, Chick's album, uh, Now He Sings, Now He Sobs. Uh, so that was a hip label. Randy's album came out. Michael's 19. He's playing incredibly on that and uh, ended up staying in town. He moved down to a loft and got involved in the loft scene, the so-called loft scene of 1970. Uh, he lived on uh, 18th Street. On 19th was a building with Chick Corea, Dave Holland, and uh, Barry Alchel, and different people living in that building over time. Uh, and they would all, uh, oh, Liebman, of course, what am I saying? He was the, the uh, ringleader of that uh, scene. And basically, for all the sax players who gathered uh, in those loft jams, that would be everyone from Michael to Steve Grossman, Bob Berg, uh, Mincer came in later, uh, Liebman, of course. They were all inspired by Latter-day John Coltrane. They would have jams with five sax players in a rhythm section and really push the uh, ascension kind of vibe uh and it was a free jazz scene that mike was immersed in it wasn't uh really a public thing they were just playing for each other but the inspiration was latter day spiritually connected coltrane we go through mike's career all the various incredible touchstones along the way record brothers steps ahead his own bands various amazing projects he comes full circle back to that train vibe that he had been coming up with and was so inspired by in the 70s loft scene in the saxophone summit those guys were rekindling their love their passion for train you know as liebman told michael at some point they did a gig it might have been at the red sea festival and it was i think just liebman and michael with a rhythm section and they were playing some deeply kind of spiritual train tunes, maybe India and stuff like that. And Lehman was like, man, we should come back to this. You know, this has got left behind this vibe that we were cultivating in the early seventies. Somehow we walked away from it. We should return to it. And uh, they got Lovano on board who was, spiritually right there as well and together it was a celebration of latter-day train which was really uh a return a full circle coming for full circle for mike back to his initial roots and having seen train as a teenager in 1966 saxophone summit was a beautiful return coming full circle the thing that makes this a really interesting uh, combination is that we all play really differently. You know, we were all saxophone players, obviously, but uh, we're coming from very different places. And that makes for a really interesting juxtaposition and combination of sounds, colors, rhythmic approaches. And it's fascinating for a listener as well for us, as well as for us. 
And, um, uh, you know, I've known Dave Liebman for many, many years. I met him when I first moved to New York when I was 19 years old. We had adjacent ap apartments. Really? And I've learned from him over the years. He's been uh, somewhat of a teacher to me, you know, from, you know, was always ahead of me. And, uh, and it's such a thrill to be able to play with him a lot lately. Um, and I'm still learning. He's a, such, such an amazing thinker, you know, and a, a clear, decisive, uh, organized, incredible mind. Uh, and, and his improvisations are, are outrageous. You know, and it, it, it's good for me. Same thing with Joe Lovano. You know, I, I can't say enough about Joe in terms of every kind of, uh, of music. And he's, a, he's a saxophonist, saxophone player. You know, he really plays the instrument uh, beautifully and does it, you know, in his own way, which is really hard to do. He's got his own sound, uh, own rhythmic approach, own ideas, and, uh, and has the ability to play in so many different, really abstract and beautiful uh, environments and that to me is, is is fascinating you know and I love to sit and talk with both Dave and Joe because I learn a lot you know. <laughs>